Hi, uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about Clojure and Vim setup. So I've had a lot of problems uh, with setting up Vim environment for Clojure. Uh, there were a lot of guides available, but they assumed too much. When I started writing Clojure, I just didn't know. Uh, I just didn't know about stuff, right? So these are unknown unknowns. Uh, I didn't know what to search for. What do I even really need? So uh, we are going to be talking about that. We'll avoid fancy stuff as much as possible. Just keeping it simple. Uh, linting is extremely necessary because uh, since I'm new to Clojure, I want to know uh, if I'm doing something wrong. So linting helps there and REPL driven development. So this is, uh, this is the beauty of Clojure, right? That uh, we can open up a REPL, which is a read eval print loop and we can start coding in there. Uh, but what is even better is if we can connect with the REPL from Vim. So we will look at uh, how to do that. And uh, last is <laughs> manipulating parents, which is parenthesis. So uh, this is a huge uh, obstacle and I haven't figured this out 100% yet, but I'm going to show you my way to do it. So starting with Clojure, uh, you need uh, these three things installed, which is open JDK 8 or 11. Uh, this is pretty easy to do. Just right sudo apt install default JDK if you are on Ubuntu. Uh, we need to install Clojure as well. So I, I think uh, I think Linegen used to do that, but uh, I just did it anyways. So install script installation is uh, really easy. Let's just add it here as well. and uh, okay and this is uh, the last we need is linegen or linegen or linegen i don't know so you can just download the script and it will self install okay so let's uh, let's assume that uh, all of this is done So once you've done all of this, let's move on to the Vim part. So let's let's uh, create a new app. Uh, let's let's call it uh, ABC app. So your app is a template. We could have used uh, different templates as well. So but this is a default template provided by Line. Let's use that. Now this is the project structure which we have. Uh, let's let's just try to run it fast so this is going to run our application and hello world perfect so let's try to see okay so there's a code.clj file where our main uh, is uh, main function is there and it uh, linegen uses a project.clj file where it has uh, defined where to find the main so we can change that if you want to but let's just go with it okay so as you can see, right, uh, we already have syntax highlighting enabled in Vim. From Vim 8, I think uh, this comes by default. Let's talk about our plugins now. So the first plugin which we need is CLJ Condor. It uh, provides linting. So I'll just give an example over here. So as you can see down below here, CLJ Condor warning unused binding args. So if we do something wrong, let's say if we define a function add uh, add add nums and we just take two nums num1 num2 and we add them right num1 num2 now if i try to call add nums with only one number uh, the linting will give me an error here that uh, this is a problem so i am using uh, i'm using a vim plugin called as uh, ale to do this uh, i'll show you how in a second so to to install clj condo what we have to do is uh, we need to go here it's a single binary uh, i think they're compiling it with graal vm so we just uh, download this binary and we install clj condo so let's just put those instructions here and let's let's use ale so okay so this is my vimrc uh, as you can see yeah so i'm using ale linters 
to do this uh, you might be using something like neo format or something else so you can just specify this depending on the plugin you are using for linting uh, li uh, for linting okay so once that is done uh, we'll st we'll get the lint so that is uh, really handy moving on uh, is the repel so let's just go to our directory let's let's create a repel right let's play with it so the command is uh, lane repel it starts a networked repel which is uh, uh, which can be communicated via the network that's why it's known as a repel and here we can do anything we want and as you can see uh, it opens in the abc app dot core namespace so if we want we can run the main function from here as well or we can run the add function add nums function which we created as well so now what we want to do is uh, let's say i have opened my vim session right i'm trying to code something now i want to interact with this repel so uh, maybe i write a new function and i want it uh, want to push that function into the repel so that it gets evaluated or i just i just want to do something with the repel right so for this uh, we need uh, we need to install two things so first is cider and repel so cider and repel is basically an abstraction uh, a kind of middleware uh, which allows you to talk with the end repel so to do that uh, you can go to this link and spend two hours figuring out how to install it or uh, the easy way to do that would be let's check it out easy way would be to create a directory called dot line uh, dot lane in uh, your home directory and a file called as profiles.clj yeah. so after doing that just add cider slash cider and repel and the repel for you okay so once that is done once we have this inside our profiles.clj file now we'll be able to uh, install vim fireplace so let's uh, open our new vim rc and as you can see i already have a ppops vim fireplace plugin installed this plugin will help us uh, or rather help Vim connect to the uh, existing REPL which has been uh, running user in REPL. Uh, as you can see, I've also added uh, another plugin here, which is uh, the rainbow plugin. Uh, it allows us to have uh, matching parentheses have the same color. And I have also added uh, a parent for plugin. This is uh, a plugin to automatically uh, handle the parenthesis for you depending on indentation so we'll give this a try uh, so let's go back to our vim instance and see uh, what's new so fireplace provides us with uh, three main functions which is uh, a cosy repel a cosy repel with the current form highlighted and uh, push the current form to the repel so let's check these out let's uh, let's go back to our repel and uh, let's just clear all this do it again so uh, now we don't have our REPL running, okay? And let's try to evaluate something from the fireplace. So if we write eval, uh, Vim fireplace is saying that there is no live REPL connection. So let's provide it with a REPL connection. Okay, so while the REPL is uh, getting started, let's write a simple function. okay okay our REPL is started so let's let's check if this function is available i don't think it should be because as i said the REPL and the files are not in sync perfect so uh, it's unable to resolve the symbol so let's try doing this using vim fireplace we are going to push this form into the REPL. so i'll press c p p and uh, something went wrong let me check okay two uh, sorry this is uh, this should be deaf end. yeah so i press cpp and as you can see uh, the REPL has evaluated this form this function and uh, it should now be available in the REPL. so let's let's try calling hello oh, perfect we pushed this uh, function directly into this REPL. so the traditional way without using vim fireplace would be to uh, reload the namespace so we do something like uh, something like abc.core and we'll do reload 
so even this would provide us with the function so this is one of the uh, one of the main usages of fireplace apart from this you can also open a cosy repel inside vim only as a separate window to do this we will do c q c and this opens up a window here we can uh, write anything we want oh, whoops one second what happened plus one two and we get three over here bottom left or we can also we can also highlight this print ln we can keep our cursor here and type cqq and it's going to put this form into the repel conveniently for us and we can just press enter to get this evaluated perfect so that is fireplace that is a vim parent for is the automatic uh, parenthesis matching based on indentation and we have the rainbows covered so the last uh, plugin which we need to check is our uh, async plj omni plugin this provides us with auto completion so let's uh, uncomment that okay so async clj omni will work with a lot of uh, plugin providers like dioplate and uh, coc.nvim or uh, async complete.vim you can use any one of your liking just check out their github okay so let's let's check our auto completion now let's try to write a function wrench even let's take a parameter max and let's try to uh, print this right so let's print ln and I'm going to take a filter so what is filter filter is returning a lazy sequence for items in collection where the predicate is true so let's write a predicate uh, for even there was a function called as even let's check it using our autocomplete oh here it is so even and then we have a, a range for max so this seems to be working okay sorry so this is an anonymous function here we go now let's push this into our REPL and let's check if it's working. Print even 20. Perfect. So there we go. Uh, thank you guys. This is uh, my setup for Vim and REPL driven development. Uh, it's pretty uh, basic, it's beginner uh, friendly. But uh, as, an I, uh, as I learn more, uh, I will definitely update with more videos. Thank you.